That's what happens. A little bit poetic. I like it. Do you like it? Let me know. Does it make sense to you? It makes sense to me. I mean... Hello you. This is Ciprian G. At the present and precise moment of 5.23 p.m. 10.01.2018 Documenting the step number 20 from the book Steps to Knowledge Channeled by Marshall Vian Sama So, step number 20 it's called uh, I will not let doubt and confusion slow my progress this step was done on the 8th, 01, 2018. It was a practice of uh, gazing into the object of choice, again, so practices of 15 minutes. I've done them uh, one at 3.33 and one at 8.33. And yeah, I would not let doubt and confusion slow my progress. So the key words here are confusion of mind breeds indecision which slower progress, greater goal, doubt and confusion are obstruction, greater power, concentrate, give yourself in the serial. So let me read what I wrote after I ended both of the practices. Matter of fact, I just wrote this like on the 9th, but I, I have a lot of... Uh, experience when it comes to letting doubt and confusion obstructing me from reaching my goals. So let's see what I wrote. Indecision has and still is to some degree been the most limiting trait of mine when it comes to fulfilling my desires. <laughs> Just as I said, it's I, I know them. As the exercise explains, it is bred by confusion of mind, by lack of having a clear and well-defined goal. I believe that I can do anything and everything I want with my life, and this has been a major reason for this confusion of mind. When we know that we can do everything, it imposes on us to choose that which we want to do. I mean, if you have the mentality that you can do anything in this world, then you're only limited by your ability to choose something. You're only limited by you have by the fact that you have to first know that which you want you want to do. So when you know that you can do ev everything, then you have to find out of that everything that which you want to do. And uh, yeah, that that has been a major point in my life. I mean, although I didn't even finish school and stuff like that, I knew that if I put my mind to something, whatever would it be, I would realize it. But it's still, there was still the question, what should I do? And that's where doubt and confusion enters, you know? And the worst thing we can do at this point, as I have done for a long time, uh, is to not choose at all. Yeah, when you not choose at all, it, it's even worse than choosing something bad. Because if you choose something bad, you, you eventually learn that that's not a thing, you don't like that, and you move on. You learn something. But when you're in the size, when you don't choose anything, you're, you're, you're nowhere. You're not doing anything. You're just being led around, as I say. So when you don't choose anything, this is what happens. To be pushed around by the winds of society on the sea of life because we have no definite destination where we're moving towards. That's what happens. A little bit poetic. I like it. Do you like it? Let me know. Does it make sense to you? It makes sense to me. I mean, to be pushed around by the winds of society on the sea of life because we have no definite destination where we're moving towards. That makes a lot of fucking sense to me. It also brings up the Earl Nightingale metaphor of a ship that has no goal and it's directed into sinking because it's not moving anywhere and it's just floating around 
that's what happens when you have no goal. Not choosing anything in decisiveness is worse than even choosing the wrong thing. As I say, it's worse. It's worse because you're not moving. You're not moving at all. You're not learning. You're in a place of stagnation. And that has been a, a major point for me for a long time because I would have these great ideas about what to do but my indecisiveness wouldn't allow me to do them because I was afraid I, uh, of, of what would my friends think, family, people around me and stuff like that. I would leave those things to them. I mean, they would shape my life because I wouldn't do them because I was afraid. I mean, I, I, I would let fear shape my life because I didn't have enough balls to do them. I don't know. It's not such a major fact in my life anymore because I somewhat grown out of that for the most part. There is still some of that though. I can say it's all gone. But... Uh, you know, I'm glad that I'm learning to to follow my ideas even while I'm afraid of what others would say. That's that's a good point to be at. So yeah, this has been step, uh, step number 20. I mean, uh, the practice was gazing at the, at the candle. I, I really quite enjoyed that practice and I might do it uh, even though not not it not being required in the pra book practice so because I think it's it's a really, really good thing for the mastery of our own mind and thoughts so that you know we don't go along with every thought that we have so we learn to master that and uh, yeah really nice practice and this has been uh, step number 20 I thank you for having watched if you did watch and uh, hey if you liked this video, maybe you like the others too, so I don't know, <laughs> watch them. Chipranji thanks you for being here with me and hey, for now I'm out. Bam, see you on to the next step.